from CBS 4 News. This is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Good morning and welcome to Facing South Florida. This is a special one hour edition of Facing and we'll continue this one hour format throughout the election. It is almost impossible to keep up with events this year because they move so quickly. In the last two weeks alone, there was the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg setting off an historic Supreme Court fight. The New York Times obtained Donald Trump's tax records showing he has paid virtually no federal income tax and owes hundreds of millions of dollars to unknown entities. There was the first and possibly only presidential debate that was a complete disaster. Two days later, the president announced he tested positive for COVID. Less than 24 hours after that, he was taken by helicopter to Walter Reed. Dozens of White House staffers are, are also positive for the disease. The president then essentially checked himself out of the hospital, returns to the White House, where he makes a big show out of taking off his mask. In the days that follow, he produces other videos like this one. So, to my favorite people in the world, the seniors. I'm a senior. I know you don't know that. Nobody knows that. Maybe you don't have to tell them, but I'm a senior. We're taking care of our seniors. You're not vulnerable, but they like to say the vulnerable, but you're the least vulnerable. But for this one thing, you are vulnerable, and so am I. But I want you to get the same care that I got. I got incredible care at Walter Reed, incredible doctors. And this medicine in particular, one medicine was unbelievable. You're going to get the same medicine. You're going to get it free, no charge. That video shows he knows he has a problem with older voters who were the key to his win four years ago. But let's get back to our timeline. He called off negotiations with House Speaker Nancy Pelosi over a new stimulus, which sends the stock market into a tailspin. He announces he won't participate in the second presidential debate in Miami next week, because he doesn't want to do it virtually. And then there was the VP debate, where the only thing people will remember is the fly that landed on Mike Pence's head for two minutes. That fly now has a Twitter account with more than 120,000 followers. And we are still 22 days out from the election. And let's not forget, we have our own races down here to worry about. Later in the show, we'll examine two of the more controversial constitutional amendments on the ballot. We will also take a look at the most hotly contested state Senate race in Florida. But we begin with the presidential race. In a few minutes, we will hear from Democratic Congressman Ted Deutsch. But first, I had a chance earlier this week to speak to Mercedes Schlapp, a senior advisor to the Trump campaign. When the president climbed the staircase onto the balcony and took off his mask, what was the purpose of that? What message was he trying to send at that moment? Look. Obviously for the president, it was his moment as he, you know, was thanking the men and women who took care of him, the doctors and nurses and Walter Reed. Um, he really thinks we need to face this head on. Uh, he believes that we should not let this virus dominate our lives. We should not live in fear. We're going to defeat the virus. We are not going to be like the Joe Biden camp where they spend time talking about how they're going to surrender and lock us up indefinitely. Uh, we want to find a solution to coronavirus. We know the president's taking very bold actions, working on Operation Warp Speed to ensure that we have a vaccine developed, that we get therapeutics to the market as quickly and safely as possible so that those individuals who are inflicted with coronavirus are able to recover. And as we're seeing uh, less hospitalizations, uh, less fatalities, and learning more about coronavirus, we know that we can be a resilient nation and be able uh, to get through this global pandemic together. Does the president not realize that when he says things like, we should not fear the virus and we can't let it dominate us, and among the other things that he said, that it comes across insensitive, in particular to the families of those who have died, as well as the millions of people who have contracted the disease? It, it seems as if he's suggesting that, that this isn't that big a deal anymore. Well, Jim, that's, that might be your opinion. I'll tell you for what I've seen with families, for example, who have been uh, inflicted with coronavirus or, for example, even the mental health anxiety and stress that is impacting families across the board. I mean, we just lost 
two teenagers this week to suicide uh, because of what they're having to deal with in terms of coronavirus uh, and in two separate cases of families that, that we know. And I've got to tell you something, it is taking a toll on America. And one thing that I've, what I'm glad we heard is the fact that he feels strongly that we can defeat this virus, okay? That we can't give up, that we need to take care of ourselves, that we have to protect ourselves and fight. I mean, we cannot surrender to this global pandemic. Uh, so I, I tell you, for me, uh, watching how my kids, and I know that uh, other kids have, have really struggled uh, during this time, the stress on the families, those who have been inflicted. I have friends right now who have coronavirus, and knowing that you know we can get through this together, I think it's the strong right message we need at this time. I'm not gonna be like Joe Biden and some in the media that continue to fear monger Americans. That is not the right approach. Is it really fear mongering or is it simply saying that you should follow CDC guidelines? Is it well, fear to encourage want... people to wear masks? I, I, I mean, look, why, why did the president at the debate mock mask wearing when it came to Joe Biden and make fun of it and continues to. And by taking the mask off on the balcony, wasn't he again sending that signal that masks aren't that big a deal? Let me make this very clear. There's a hypocrisy here. And I would uh, encourage you to watch some of the videos of Joe Biden where he's walking by reporters with no mask on, where he's at the town hall where there's no mask on, yet no one covers it. So when President Trump is saying, wear your mask, it's a patriotic thing to do. Obviously, when he was standing in front of the balcony, no one was near him. There was a photographer in the back that wasn't even that close to him. It, it's, it's just an outrage. It just shows a double standard of how some in the media are just nitpicking who, what they want to, or cherry picking what they want to report. So I, I think that there is a stubborn double standard. We see this all the time, these media personalities shaming Americans for not wearing a mask, yet they, they themselves are out smoking cigars, talking closely to people, not six feet apart, and not wearing masks. So I'm done with the hypocrisy. I think that at the end of the day, as Americans, we have the personal responsibility to take care of ourselves, to follow the CDC guidelines, which recommends wearing a mask if you cannot socially distance. That is what the president and the administration is supporting. That's what we're doing here at the campaign. And I think that I, I just it really, I see that they don't cover the Joe Biden side of this. Well, when we look at the debate, for instance, and the family of the president comes in, sits down, and everyone takes off their mask and refuses to wear it. And when they're offered a mask, when members of the Cleveland Clinic, the medical team came over and suggested that they wear a mask and they refuse, what message does that send? When you say that you're saying you're following CDC guidelines, you know, they followed I, the guidelines of the Cleveland Clinic. They walked in with the mask and they were all tested prior to getting on Air Force One because that is a requirement. But you understand that testing alone doesn't stop the disease from being... And you know what? Senator Tom Tillis wore a mask. His wife is a nurse. He says he wears a mask all the time and he still got COVID. So it just shows you the complexity of this virus. It shows that there is a far reach in this. And at the end of the day, we need to come up with solutions. It's why the president is working day in and day out to develop this vaccine while Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are pushing anti-vaccine conspiracy theories. Like saying saying that you cannot trust a President Trump administration's vaccine. That is problematic. And let me tell you another thing. Joe Biden is not equipped to handle the coronavirus. He has no plan. He's been attacking the president. And when you look at his record with swine flu, where at the end of the day, he depleted our strategic national stockpile. And also they halted swine flu testing. And even his own team members said, we were lucky we survived this catastrophe. It just shows that Joe Biden cannot handle the coronavirus response. The president for four years has been talking about health care and wanting to eliminate Obamacare and do away with the Affordable Care Act. Yet during that entire time, he's yet to put forward an actual plan to replace Obamacare. Why is that? Why does, it, why does the president fail to actually document what his plan would do? You must have missed his speech two weeks ago. He talked about his health care plan. As we know, it includes making sure that there's more choices for Americans. It's also to ensure that we can lower drug prices. Uh, this is about more competition in uh, between states and in ensuring that we can lower 
health care prices. I mean, I'm happy to send but you his health care plan. Um, but here's the deal. What we do know is that under President Trump, we have seen premiums going down. We have seen the fact that, uh, there, that we've allowed for companies to come together, small businesses, so that they're able to provide health, in, health insurance to uh, their employees. Why did the president break off negotiations with the Democrats? Steve Mnuchin was meeting with Nancy Pelosi, try to come up with a deal to put more m stimulus money into the economy here to give people who are out of work an opportunity. Why did the president summarily drop out of the negotiation? Not the president. Jim, it's not the president. Nancy Pelosi did not negotiate in good Please. faith. No, 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 no. Stop right there. Let me tell you, we, the president has tried to negotiate their team with Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi wants to give tax cuts to the rich. Nancy Pelosi wants to bail out these failed cities and local governments and their big fat pension plans. That is not going to work. We need to focus on helping the airline industry, the small businesses, and provide immediate relief for families. It's a very simple equation. Let's do standalone bills. Let's get them done. Speaker Pelosi is holding this funding hostage because she doesn't want President Trump to win. That's all it is. It's pure politics for Nancy Pelosi on this issue. We'll be right back with Congressman Ted Deutsch. 